Prodno paradox is a is is what's thought of as an un, as a surprising statistical phenomena. It could apply to uh, parlor games, various kinds of gambling situations, or any decision under uncertainty. And the idea is is that you you're playing some sort of a game uh, where it is more likely you will lose money than make money. But by alternating the games in a certain way and looking at what happens in the aggregate to your total amount you bet, that you can, even though the games are identical to each other, you can turn them into a winning situation. So it's like taking one loser and another loser and kind of adding them together and getting a winner out of it. This is thought of as a paradox to a lot of people. It sounds, how could this happen? And uh, the examples of that paradox tended to be very complicated and somewhat artificial. They did not look like the kind of things you would do if you went into a gambling casino or certainly not if you invested in the stock market. And what I was able to show is by uh, exploiting these results, these differences between the median and the expected return, that in fact this phenomenon does apply to very commonly well understood situations in investment as well as a standard simplified version of uh, blackjack betting that's uh, used in the uh, quantitative gambling literature. When one looks at these results, it, I think you see this, it's not like there's some startling new mathematics or anything new. It's very simple and easy to show this and it doesn't really surprise experts that had thought about this because they can easily see how the calculation was and probably already knew it. But I think that what had been missed here was the connection between this simple way to look at situ simple situations of gambling and investment and this whole uh, uh, literature and this whole aura that had surrounded this phenomena called the Perondo paradox. And so I think that's where the contribution was, is really showing this link uh, here that this was one and the same thing and that the, you can come up with much simpler examples that were com than were commonly known at the time. The, the investment for advice commonly given when one diversifies investments or not, where you're told not to put all your eggs in one basket, like put all your money in one stock or one bond, is to put some money in some stocks and other money in bonds or some, or some type of way of spreading the money around. When most people think about that, they probably think you just put $100 here or $1,000 or $10,000 here and $10,000 there and then just leave it over time and over a period of time then take it out at the end. That's one type of diversification called buy and hold. The second type which is more commonly advocated by financial advisors is that more complicated. There you have to keep a fixed percentage of what your value of your portfolio is in each asset. So if somebody said uh, keep 50% invested in one asset and 50% in another asset, you'd be required to buy one and sell the other as you went along to make sure that at the, at the end of a period you chose for rebalancing, you again had 50% of your total money invested in one and 50% in the other. What I showed was that that rebalancing is actually a more powerful way to generate a Prando paradox. It makes it easier to turn what would otherwise be losers with a higher chance of losing the winning into winners by diversification than using the buy and hold strategy. Well, I think it's fun to take an old subject. This is a very, very old subject. What the right way is to summarize as a statistic, uh, an uncertain number that's happening in the future could have many possible values. Median or mean, it's called the expected return. It's a very old subject. And so to see that even, even after this period of time has passed and so much has been written in textbooks about it and has been asked in exams about it, that you can, that you can summarize the data and find results of a type that still surprise people when they read it. After they read it, they say there's no paradox. After they read it, they say, oh, I already knew this. I really, because it is pretty simple. But in advance of seeing this, it surprises people. And that's why these results are, are viewed as paradoxical or interesting even to the investment professionals that read this in their own uh, journal. Thank you.